Barack Obama had, as you all know, uh, campaigned for change we can believe in, and yet on a on a on a long list of national security matters, the policies of the Obama administration were all but identical to the policies of the Bush administration, from drone strikes to warrantless mass surveillance to whistleblower prosecutions to invocation of the state secrets privilege, non-prosecution of torturers, you name it, there was, there was a, a, a peculiar uh, continuity from the Bush administration to the Obama administration. And, and one rainy afternoon, I pulled out a book, dusty book from my library called The English Constitution. This was a good part of the explanation for this phenomenon of continuity that I was wondering about. The dignified institutions, the, the, the crown and the House of Lords, uh, the monarchy, were, were there largely for show and through great pomp and circumstance. They convinced the people uh, through this, this glorious facade that they were the real power, but the real power, in fact, was literally behind the throne and lay in the House of Commons, the cabinet, the prime minister, where it seemed to me pretty clear that, that the, the bifurcated system was replicated in the United States. We had three branches largely for show, presidency, the Congress, and the courts, which the public believed defined and managed national security policy. But in reality, national security policy was in fact um, carried out largely by a group of several hundred managers of the intelligence, law enforcement, military uh, agencies and departments of the United States government. And as a consequence of two phenomena, a massive transfer of power had occurred since World War II from the so-called Madisonian institutions, Congress, the presidency, and the courts, to the managers of the security bureaucracy. How is it that the national security managers get away with it? Now, you offered one answer to that question. I'm going to offer a slightly different answer, and my answer lies in our collective self-assigned role in history. The fact is we, not necessarily you and me, but our fellow citizens, we have long believed that we are God's chosen people, God's agent in working out the salvation of the world. Back in 1630, John Winthrop told us so, and others since, from Abraham Lincoln to Woodrow Wilson to George W. Bush, have affirmed that view. It's become hardwired into our collective self-identity. Sustaining that conviction requires a misleading account of, the, of actual American history, but sadly, it's that sanitized and curated history that most Americans prefer. Certainly, it's the history that the institutions that Professor Glennon referred to prefer. But particularly, uh, Federalist Paper number four is John Jay. And one of his specialties was foreign affairs. But he made it very clear why you do not give that power to one person. And this was his language. It is too true, however disgraceful it may be to human nature, that nations in general will make war whenever they have a prospect of getting anything by it. But then he put in uh, this qualification. Absolute monarchs, he said, will often make war when their nations are to get nothing by it. But for purposes and objects merely personal, such as a thirst for military glory, revenge, for personal affronts, ambition, or private compacts to aggrandize or support their particular families or partisans. 
These and other motives, he says, which affect only the mind of the sovereign, often lead him to engage in wars not sanctified by justice or the voice and interest of his people. I do want to mention Abraham Lincoln. Many people felt that with the Civil War, uh, Lincoln would have had all the necessary authority to act uh, unilaterally, independently. Uh, but he did not do what presidents uh, have done from uh, Truman on. Uh, Lincoln did not claim he had inherent power. I have aggregate power. I have an emergency power, on and on and on. He did not do that. What is a no-fly zone? Uh, the only way you can have a no-fly zone, that is to protect U.S. and NATO airplanes, is to bomb everything on the ground that would be a threat. Uh, any airfields, any tanks, any anti-aircraft, that's how you do it. You have not only Obama, but almost probably every member of the Senate Intelligence Committee who sat by for months knowing that this lie had been perpetrated on the American people. And this was what Edward Snowden finally said was one of the things that motivated him to engage in this leak. What's happened to the leadership of this country? It goes back to the point that I made. If you, if you don't elect individuals possessed of civic virtue, devoted to the public good, who are not con content to play a ceremonial role, kissing babies and greeting high school groups in Washington. I mean, th this democracy is not going to survive. And the ultimate explanation for your, your, your very insightful comments as to why the American people um, don't, don't resist the propagandizing that constantly in, is, is aimed at ingratiating itself with them by suggesting that they are exceptional and God's chosen people. Um, it has to do with, with what, what David Souter said after he retired from the Supreme Court as pervasive civic ignorance on the part of the American people. The, the original sin is the creation of the all-volunteer force. Uh, which severed the connection between the American military and the American people, uh, really played into the hands of the national security managers. Here, it's your army. Do what you want with it. Yes. And allows the American people to think that as long as they uh, stand up and sing the national anthem before kickoff and... Uh, quote unquote, to support the troops without taking any serious interest in what the troops are doing and the consequences, uh, that, that that's okay, that, that we've done our share. Whether we're talking Kelly, Mattis, or McMaster, the big three, have not expressed a single coherent idea as to how we might bring our wars to an end. This center uh, is part of a gallop effort, not just the Senate, but part of a gallant effort to try to uh, encourage d a debate, engage citizens in, in, in a greater awareness of how f much we've gone off the rails uh, in our national security policies and, and the potential for a more restrained approach uh, to, to work more effectively.